How's it going, guys? I am finished with the Mayhem event, and I want to go through kind of my thoughts on the event, um, the mods that were on it, the rewards. I'm going to go through kind of a quick overview of my build, how it works, in case people want to replicate it. POB will be in the description. And then I want to briefly talk about Endless Delve plans and what to expect from me for that so starting off i didn't get to 100 i've died three times just under 80 percent between 75 and 80 percent and i just like my focus isn't here i can't find the will and motivation to just keep going and considering that like 24 hours ago when i looked at this looking at the raider i'm 99 and 65.3%, rank 2 is 95, hasn't played in two days. Like, I don't feel like I'm going to accomplish anything for myself by continuing to push to 100. I'm just, like, if someone's going to try and take it from me, I'll finish it off. But my goal was to get rank 1 Raider. I feel like I've sufficiently achieved that for the time being, and we'll let it be. So let's talk Mayhem. I'm going to throw a map in here. I've been running out of chaos unless i find harbinger maps like i i don't get chaos oh there are mods on every single map this one has harbingers in it but then there are additional mods this one has 30 percent increased area of effect and 40 percent fizz is extra cold most of these mods are pretty like pretty much don't really have much of an effect on the map and most of them are lesser than what the map mods you could roll so you could get two additional projectiles as a mod, which is the same as the map mod, but this map mod here has 100%, 101 physical as extra lightning damage. Now here, I only have 40% physical as extra cold. So that is way less than what can roll on the map. And then you can roll, like, monsters have like 100% increased AoE. You can still roll monsters maim on hit with attacks or hinder with spells. You can get 20% move attack and cast speed as a mod. The one that can roll in maps is much higher. Between 35 and 45 attack and cast speed with crazy movement speed. But the big thing that jumps out to me is the monster damage. There's an increased monster damage mod that can roll on red maps. 22 to 25% increased monster damage. The mod that could roll on here was 40% increased damage, which is a lot. Like, that affects every bit of damage. And then there's also if enemies take 35% less damage. That's also a lot. So it, it seems really strange to me that those two mods were included in this. And I think to a lot of players, like, jumping into this, it's already insanely crazy with all of the mayhem mods, like the 20 Harbingers that I have in this map, or like the crazy breaches, the beyond, the delirium, the exiles tormented spirits all over the place like that alone is probably a lot to the average player just to deal with and then like trying to progress through the story and stuff with all these extra mods that are just making the game way harder i feel like it really wasn't called for in this event that being said i had a lot of fun with the event but like i'm not your average player at the same time i've, I've been doing this for a very long time now let's talk about rewards so this time, there were rewards given for the top six players that finished in SSF. That's it. In previous events, and almost every previous event, the top five of each Ascendancy class got a pretty much like in-game trophy. Like a, a demigod, special unique item, not super useful in any kind of realistic sense. It's just a trophy. And some people like to collect them, and I've been offered by people to purchase mine in the past never sold them i just keep them there but i've had multiple people like literally multiple people within my community which is relatively small compared to the larger poe community say that they were discouraged in this event from trying to push further like because there weren't they weren't going to get anything for it like there's there's really no point so i want to go back to like my profile here looking at my like race rewards 2009 earlier, Synthesis event number 5, Assassin. This was the Synthesis flashback event. This was the first time I ever leveled a character to level 100 because I wanted to try and get a Demi. I wanted that little trophy 
that I have in standard, and I got it. I was rank 5 assassin in the event, got my first ever level 100, and that is what pushed me to become, like, the player that I am today. Like, without that event and getting that first level 100, having that race, like, I, I wouldn't be doing this still, like, trying to push for 100s and... And I feel like it, it's a shame that GGG kind of took that away from a large majority of the player base. Um, it, it really doesn't make sense to me. It's just like, this is avoided events. Like, it's it's just for fun. They added mods on it that made it far less fun. And we really don't get anything for participating in it besides a mystery box at level 50. Normally, these these events would go to the like very, very end. Let me pull up a raider here. So top five raiders here, level 94, um, 95, 95, 95. These, these players, like in all previous events, would be fighting over these dimmies, like their positions. It would matter. But now it just doesn't. It just doesn't. Like I, even if I got rank seven overall, I get nothing. The only reason I wanted rank one raider is so that on Pewee, on this website, I'll add another rank one raider in an event to my list of accomplishments. That's it. That's the only thing I get out of doing this. Aside from pushing for the Grand Ranger st status for the year. Like that's that's something that not many people get to do. But something I've been grinding for all year long. That's why I, the only reason I felt the need to like push up there. But I can't find the reasoning why GGG found the reason to offer less rewards to players for these events this time that that's good that's my take on that um it is what it is and let's talk about fire trap raider so i got a searing touch searing touch you can then get a six link and take fire trap to in game it's pretty much that simple I, I'm running a Bisco's Leash for Rampage just because of this event for leveling. I would not be using this for like a normal build. But I am running here Fire Trap, Trap and Mind Damage, Elemental Focus, Controlled Destruction, Inspiration, and Burning Damage Support. So Elemental Focus means I cannot afflict Elemental Ailments, so I cannot ignite. And Controlled Destruction means I'm probably not going to crit with my Fire Trap. So this build is primarily doing damage with the fire trap damage over time, which was nerfed by 25% this league. So like this, this build got nerfed this league. It still works. It's still fine. And then on a Raider, like the biggest issue with this build is the AOE coverage. It's, it's just really not here. You gotta like get like, every little bit of AOE everywhere. Like on an elementalist, you just get insane AOE like all the time. So since my fire trap cannot ignite at all, I am also using flamethrower trap. This is linked with combustion because it'll give increased chance to ignite and then ignited enemies by the flamethrower trap will have less fire res and then in turn will take more damage from my fire trap. And then there's advanced traps on here to give it better cooldown recovery. And then trapping my damage is just some extra damage. Sure, why not? Then everything else is just kind of extra except for the curses. I am running three curses on this build because there are three good curses to scale the dot from the flamethrower trap. You have elemental weakness and flammability, which stacks a lot. Like that's minus 90 resistances just there without any increased curse effect. And then Despair causes enemies to take increased damage from damage over time. And then I'm applying those all in one swift motion with Bane. Which also doesn't have the greatest AoE that I would want. Like if I could get a Carcass Jack on this, beautiful, fantastic. This build is insanely better just right off the bat. And that right there is pretty much the gist of the build. Um, I'm running Grace for an aura. I'm running Skitterbots, I'm running Clarity, I'm running Vitality, and I'm running Defiance Banner. I'm running Defiance Banner because there's a mod that can roll crit chance and multi on maps, which is also lower than that can roll on normal maps here. One of the additional modifiers. Um, I wanted to help protect myself against crits, so I'm running Defiance Banner. Now, it, it's probably better for damage in like every 
case, if you can find a way to work around the mana cost of the fire trap, which I'm lowering the cost here. I'm using inspiration to lower the cost of fire trap in the six link. And if I were to continue pushing my skill gem levels higher, I would be increasing the mana cost and it get it would get harder to use. So yeah, like even with a highly leveled clarity, like just spamming down fire traps, I run out of mana. But it comes back quickly enough that I don't need a mana flask. Um, there are gloves that allow you to spend life for traps that come from incursion. But then also the staff, like I could have a plus three staff that has the same mods on it. You could you like so you could have a better staff. I didn't get a helm enchant. I have like the I have lesser implicits on here. Action speed is trap throwing speed, so I have that. I got chance to avoid ailments so that I didn't have to come down here and get crystal skin. So passive tree here, getting Avatar the Veil. I'm causing nearby enemies to have fire exposure, so I don't have to use any exposure of any kind on this build. And then I'm getting Onslaught and then the extra, the more chance to evade attacks. So this really increases my movement speed. The attack and cast speed are doing nothing for this character except for the cast speed of Bane. That's it. Like that's that's all I'm getting from Onslaught other than movement speed. And then the spell suppression and phasing. Being a raider makes it much easier to get spell suppression capped. Coming through here, I got movement speed along the way. Coming down through here, I get some spell suppression. And then I got a little bit on this ch chest and a little bit on the implicit here. That's all I needed. Then I'm spell suppression capped because I'm a raider. I didn't have to mess with entrench or come down here to get inveterate or even come up here to get instinct. Like I didn't need any of those. That's one of the big perks of playing raider. And then Raider also stacks so much evasion that using Ghost Dance can increase your survivability a lot. So I get I get an additional curse up here, and then a third curse coming from Dodre Stamming. Um, you could get the Cosprey's chest to get an additional curse. This is what I did in Trade League when I played this build. I'm getting Frenzy Charges here from Master Sapper. Um, when it you get a chance to gain Frenzy Charges when traps triggered by an enemy. Um, it makes it really easy to generate frenzy charges with any kind of trap build, which is nice, which also means you don't have to utilize the raider frenzy charge on kill. It's, it's really nice. It works out really well. You can go right into it really easily. You just push up here and grab these trap nodes right off the bat, and then you're good to go. But without using life tap, trying to get the mana cost of it, it it's kind of costly. And then from there, I spec into duration. Because the fire trap, like burning ground duration, is not that high. So when this one trap goes off, I think duration is 3.08 seconds. If that ground stays there, there's a helm enchant for duration. And like there's other duration nodes here on the tree that I could have gotten. You can come get Ash, Frost, and Storm along the way as well. But I'm, I'm built to survive. I've got so much life on this build for not having really good life gear like none of it's super amazing no life on my belt like crafted life on my helmet i don't have a shield which was kind of the plan but so to make up for that i just stacked life everywhere that i could to try and survive in this event and then i'm using well i have armor evasion boots because that's just what i got that rolled well but getting evasion es gear for the gloves, helmet, and body armor gives me a sizable enough energy shield buffer that Ghost Stance is actually useful. And then without any flasks or anything up, I've got 83% chance to evade attacks. And then I'm running a Stib Knight flask and a Jade flask since I don't need a Quartz flask for phasing because I'm a raider, I just get phasing. I could use this extra bit and then jump up to 91% chance to evade attacks, actually get some more evasion from my granite flask. So evasion's really high. Cap spell suppression. I have 76 all res because I got the all res on the chest. And that that's pretty much it. And like for the other thing, I got 5% chance to block spell damage just because. Um, it seemed like spell damage is still what I'm taking the most damage of. 
Cause like you don't you just don't get hit by attacks and you need some other buffer on top of spell suppression to not die to spells. Cause spells just do a crazy amount of damage in this game. So we can see here that I'm not cursing anything yet. I'm just dropping fire traps. And of course I have a rampage. And the like the fire traps are killing stuff. You would wish the AOD was better. But it's fine. But then if I curse stuff, they get like minus 100 fire res and take increased damage from damage over time. Dealing with harbingers kind of sucks because you can't like maintain curses on things as well. And then if I really needed extra damage, I could drop the flamethrower traps and they can come in here and just be that little extra source of lowering monsters resistances. And if you want to look into the build further, again... Um, POB will be listed in the video description um, along with the path of building like from like each day of the event that I made a video so if you wanted to see the progression how it went to get to this point it, it's all there it's all documented below the video and then I'm also stacking a lot of stun avoidance a particular mod on the flask 46% chance to avoid being stunned and then this craft on my chest chance to avoid ailments chance to avoid being stunned that's another 23 on top of my 46 when my flask is up that gets me to 69 and then on the passive tree i have even more getting a massive shrine really helps with the aoe on on things you're gonna see it spreads a lot more than it used to i'm gonna turn the charge shrine off just to not have extra damage on this boss but this boss like can't hit me it does attacks so i can just literally stand here and like i was mentioning passive tree these nodes right here give chance to avoid being stunned this is 1636 on top of my 69 gets me 100 percent chance to avoid being stunned while my flasks up so then i can't be stunned if i do get hit and then something I did forget to mention is the Infernal Cry. This will cover the enemy in ash, causing it to take increased fire damage. And then the skitter bots are giving me chill and shock on enemies. And like that, that's what I can do to bosses. Non-optimal gear, since I was just trying to like rush 100 and stay alive. Like I could I could drop like 30% of my life and like double my damage on the passive tree probably but it, it kind of works just like any other good raider build you pretty much can't get hit if you do it's probably from spell damage and you have to mitigate that to survive and then me having like 65 or what is it like 63 maybe 100 effective hp it's not bad like and it wouldn't be hard for me to finish out pushing this to 100 it, it just I, I really, I, I've died three times. Once was misclicking the shrine. Once was some stupid arch nemesis combination um, on a physical based abyss bat that had soul eater, echoist, and steel infused. So the thing does physical damage anyways. And physical damage is the big weakness of the build. Partially why I'm running the granite flask and why I have this mastery right here that gives 5% of my evasion rating as extra armor. So, like, without my flask up at all, I've got 21% physical damage reduction. I have an enduring cry or endurance charges. I have a granite flask. That helps me survive the physical damage in case I were to get hit. Like the, like, random times I do happen to get hit. So, yeah, unless, unless somebody tries to tank rank 1 raider for me, this is it for me for this event so now let's talk about delve i didn't delve at all in this event so i'm gonna swap characters so my plan for delve is to play spectral helix on a raider now, this is something i have not done i played spectral helix on a dead eye which is what this build is and then i did practice on delve last week before the event started I went to 572 and i think my my plan for it i think it's going to work just fine assuming i can get the gear and given that only the top six that get there 
and SSF Softcore are going to get rewards, I'm going to see if I can beat the Occultists. Because the Occultists have Corpse Explosion, and as you get further down, the monster life goes up, and then since you're exploding enemies, dealing a percentage of their life as extra damage, you, j you just get infinitely scaling damage as you push down through Delph. So, like, without a doubt, the best possible build is probably a Poisonous Concoction Plague Bearer Occultist. And I'll be surprised if I can make it into the top six with what I'm planning. But uh, like I mentioned earlier with the rewards, like if you want rewards, you have to play the most meta build possible. Like you, you can't be rewarded for uh, going into the event and trying to do something unique. It's something that Mathel did all the time in all kinds of events. He would go play SSF Hardcore and just... Like, I think he played Frostbolt Ice Nova, like, Assassin in one of them. Because he could get a Demi in that class. And you don't have to play the meta. You can still compete for something. And, and like, I, I, it still baffles me. But, this event, I discovered some new tech. I am currently, on my other monitor, watching a live stream with audio. And you can't hear it. Because I've found out a way that I can isolate PoE's audio and I can just record. So this allowed me, during this event, to be able to record everything. And just do whatever as I went and just react to whatever happened. Now normally, I'm gonna, like every video that I like have ever made, I will kind of plan out what the content through the video is going to be. And then kind of like mold that together and try and present a story through it now like the videos i made for this mayhem event like i've never done anything like that before if anything crazy happened i would react to it and then i would like convert the the video files for like 12 plus hours of gameplay and then i had to import them to premiere cut out like 11 and a half hours of those just just to the parts where i was talking and then it, it wound up making a fairly decent video honestly and i didn't put much time into editing it but even still i spent probably two to three hours working on editing and uploading and getting these videos out during this event like so that's two or two or three hours a day that i lost that i could have been pushing that i could have maybe pushed to the top six so i i'm pretty sure like if i have a chance if i feel i have a chance to get top six in this delve event you're not going to see a video till it's over um for me like I'll, I'll continue to try and record everything like i've been doing so that i might be able to piece together a progression video of how it went but also it's got me thinking just like is it, is it really worth it like i i'm like what what am i really proving i guess like i continue to add these like rank one raider like titles to my name on pue racing it's probably much more beneficial to me to like focus on content and just like making videos so it, it's got me it's got me kind of thinking like maybe that becomes more my focus probably next year is that i'm going to try and probably focus more on creating content rather than trying to do all this race stuff it would probably be more fun for me overall as well because i've leveled like seven raiders to 100 this year it's crazy and i don't think i want to do that again next year i don't think try to try to go back to having fun with the game rather than just like torturing myself with it um i think that'd probably be good for me and the channel so yeah that's all i've got for today um i'm gonna upload runs two and three of rift wizard um, the next two days before the Delve event starts. But yeah, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button as it really helps the channel out a lot. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss more videos from me. If you'd like to help support my channel, please consider using the super thanks, the heart icon just below the video or by joining to become a member. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.